السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters and viewers, callers all over the world Welcome to Reverses, the podcast that is run by Tartil AI And inshallah ta'ala we are going to be going uh, through a number of uh, callers today and listening to the stories and uh, inspirational uh, highlights of the Quran journey bi idhnillahi ta'ala and also providing reminders and some advices to our brothers and sisters inshallah ta'ala so do benefit from what we have for you today and inshallah ta'ala without further ado we are going to start with our first caller our sister Kothar assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh how are you sister Kothar are you okay Alhamdulillah. Well, Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. Where are you calling from? Um, from Dubai. From Dubai, MashaAllah. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. I'm Moroccan, mashallah. actually. French, Moroccan, living in Dubai. Okay, okay. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Beautiful, beautiful. MashaAllah. Tabarakallah. So you are a student of the Quran yourself? Yes, Alhamdulillah. Okay, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. How far have you reached in the Quran? Uh, from the beginning, I, uh, Alhamdulillah, I, um, I, uh, yes, I'm memorizing uh, Surah Al-Baqarah and uh, Al-Imran, and from Mashallah. down from Al-Nas to Al-Aqaf. Al-Baqarah and Al-Imran from the front of the Quran, and yeah. Al-Aqaf to Al-Nas from the back of the Quran. Yeah. MashaAllah. So you have how many Jews altogether? Uh, five, uh, almost nine. Almost nine. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It's a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How is it going then? How are you finding it? Alhamdulillah. It's starting to, <laughs> to get like uh, hard because of the quantity. But Alhamdulillah. So, MashaAllah. 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 Alhamdulillah. And what is your question, inshaAllah? Uh, uh, first of all, I wanted to thank you for this beautiful app. It's helping a lot, really a lot, a lot. Uh, before Masha. I was always asking my husband and my kids Masha. every time, please can I recite, please can I recite. And sometimes they Masha. have they have time, sometimes sometimes not. Masha. But Alhamdulillah, it's really my companion now. The Masha Allah, Masha Allah. Alhamdulillah, 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 in the kitchen, I'm very in the glad car, to hear that. When I'm walking, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I'm very, very happy with it. Thank you. Masha, may Allah increase you. Ameen, Ameen. May Allah increase you. Ameen. Barakallahu feekum. Barakallahu feekum. And uh, I wanted to add something. If it was possible to have like um, a section in the app with like um, a question and we have to like we, ent- we add like the, the quantity we know, we are memorizing and then uh, we have a question. You know what I mean? Uh, like it's Allah, the beginning bi-idni. of the ayah, and we have to nah. finish it. It will be really helpful, inshallah. Mashallah. Inshallah. I'll pass that on to the rest of the team, inshallah ta'ala. And I'm sure they'll try their best, bi to incorporate that. Inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Really, barakallahu feekum. And... Wa feeki barakallah. Do you have any specific questions with regards to your Quran journey that we can help with at all? Uh, sorry? Do you have any specific questions in relation to your Quran journey oh. that we can help with? Um, uh, I actually, I'm, um, I joined, like, um, how is it called, a center, a French uh, memorizing center in France, at Dany, at Dany, Marquez at Dany. So, alhamd- you, you, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. If you could speak a little bit louder as well, inshallah. Ah, a little bit louder, okay. Uh, I joined a center in France called Adani, Marquez Adani. Adani in France, okay. Yes, and uh, Alhamdulillah, with the, I have a sheikha, the ustada who is uh, teaching us. Alhamdulillah, she gave us like um, uh, a program, okay, to follow. Mm-hmm. So Alhamdulillah, for me, it's fine. Alhamdulillah, I'm just following the program. Beautiful. But um, for my sister, mashallah, she is uh, mor- uh, she memorized from Surah Al-Baqarah to Surah Al-Tawbah. Beautiful. Okay. And she would like to have like a program, a plan that she can follow because she just like every day she she just revised from here and there. But she wants a program to follow if it's possible. Okay. So she just wants like some advice with a program that she can follow with her memorization. Uh, yeah, but especially for, from Surah Al-Baqarah to At-Tawbah, like every day how much she needs, like which Jews and uh, the quantity, you know what I mean? 
Clear, clear. Okay, inshallah ta'ala. Is she listening to us now or are you going to pass on this information? I, I will pass her the information. Okay. So first and foremost, uh, I can give some general advice inshallah ta'ala, but okay. we over here, uh, even with the app, the Tartil app, we always advise that uh, this app doesn't take the place, it doesn't replace the teacher. So definitely she would have to find her teacher and have that program with a teacher, a regular interaction with a teacher. And the most important thing that she has to remember is on her Quran journey with the teacher, she will need to ensure that she has a set amount of memorization and a set amount of revision. Both of them have to be set. Memorization and revision. Okay? The memorization and the revision not only has to be a set amount, but I advise personally that the revision must be double the memorization. If you want to ensure that you have filled in all of your gaps and the Quran doesn't become weak, then your memorization and your revision has to be a set amount and your revision has to be double the amount of memorization. That means, say for example, she memorizes two pages a week of new memorization. The revision would have to be at least four pages a week or even more than that. Because if she is moving at a certain pace with regards to her memorization, but she's moving at a slower speed with regards to her revision, then she's going to finish the Quran faster, but she may struggle with remembering what she had previously memorized. So the revision has to be double. And this is something, inshallah, that all of the uh, viewers can benefit from as well at the same time. The revision has to be more than memorization. It has to be incorporated Mm -hmm. and it has to be more. Yeah, yeah. So Thanks. tell her that, inshallah ta'ala, that's the advice that we can give. Another thing that will really help her with regards to the, uh, the amount she's memorized, Al-Baqarah to at tawbah is if she has companions that she reviews the Quran with, like yourself and like other sisters, where yeah. they meet online virtually or even in person and they read. So ay halaqa. It could be online, it could be in person, and they revise maybe one juz at a time, half a juz at a time. They set the amount together. Everybody reads one ayah each, one ayah, one ayah, one ayah. When you read together and you meet on that basis, it really does help strengthen the memory. So that's very okay. important as well. Mm-hmm. Insha'Allah, Insha'Allah. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakallah khair, Sister Kothar. Any other questions or advice that we can give? Thank you very much. I will finish. I will. Um, Inshallah, listen to <laughs> your other advice, inshallah. Inshallah ta'ala. Okay, so <laughs> lovely speaking with you. Wa'iyak, wa'iyak, wa'iyak. Barakallahu feek. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'i. So brothers and sisters, you actually heard that advice. And we discussed revision. Revision is extremely important. There is an analogy or an example or a parable, if you wish, that some of the scholars, they mention when they are giving advice with regards to revision. And they say the person who's memorizing Quran and doesn't revise is like the farmer who grows crops every single day, but doesn't water them. So every single day he's harvesting, growing new crops, and mashallah, his farmyard looks amazing and beautiful. And there's a lot of things that are coming out into fruition. So this is like the person who's memorizing new surahs, new ayahs, new pages. They're going through the Quran and they're traversing through, but they're not watering the previous flowers and crops and the things that he's growing. Likewise, the previous surahs are not being revised. They're not being looked at, given much attention. What's going to happen in the process? They're going to die out. So revising brothers and sisters is extremely important. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, تَعَاهَدُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ فَوَالَّذِي نَفْسُ مُحَمَّدٍ بِيَدِهِ لَهُوَ أَشَدُّ تَفَلُّتًا مِنَ الْإِبِلِ فِي عُقُلِهَا Review this Qur'an and read it again and again and again. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I swear by the one whose hand my soul lies in, I swear by Allah that the Qur'an escapes from memory faster than camels do from a bonded rope. So this is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's advice. Review the Qur'an. And notice, he didn't say, review this amount, X amount. He just said, review it regularly. The more you read it, the more the Quran will stay with you. And the less you read it, the more faster or the more likely the Quran will depart from what you memorize. And the worst thing that a student of Quran can go through, literally the worst thing ever, is Quran that you have been struggling with late nights, early morning, so much time you invested into 
for it to depart from your memory. Trust me, not only is it something which is terrible in the sight of Allah, but even you, you won't feel good with yourself. So revising brothers and sisters, as daunting as it may be sometimes, to review things that you have forgotten and just going through that sort of phase, you need to do it. It's very, very, very important. And inshaAllah ta'ala, it's what's going to make your journey all the more worthwhile. Imagine as you're going, everything is solid. And as you're going through the Quran, by the time you finish, inshaAllah ta'ala, everything will be smooth. But if you finish the Quran and you get from one side of the book to the other side of the book, and then you finish and you feel like I'm not a half of yet, it's a little bit sad. So a person has to remember that revision is going to be considered the most important ingredient. The Prophet ﷺ, we know that he told us in many ahadith and narrations that a person will be asked Yom Al-Qiyamah about the knowledge they already learnt. You'll be asked about that. So if somebody even were to ask the question, what's more important? We say both of them are. Over here at Tartil, we want you to finish the Qur'an and complete the Qur'an and memorize the Qur'an and strengthen as well. We're not going to prefer one over the other. But if somebody were to bring this scenario, this question hypothetically and say, which one? If I were to just stick with one, which one is more important? Without a shadow of a doubt, we would advise that it is the revision. And that's why the app is your revision partner. That's what how we have presented it to everybody. So Surah Al-Fatiha, let's look at that for example. Surah Al-Fatiha is quite tricky in reality. There are two ayat in Surah Al-Fatiha that resemble one another. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim resembles ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It's similar. Like if you look at it from face value, it's very similar. But we don't get that wrong. Everyone gets it right. No one models up Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim with ar-Rahman ar-Rahim or with any other ayah. It's because the tongue has memorized it. It's not a heart or a mind thing anymore. You've read this so many times, your tongue has memorized it, has picked it up. Even if your mind is absent and you're somewhere else daydreaming, no one will get Surah Al-Fatiha wrong. So, kathratu takrar excessive repetition, revision, read again and again, bi'idhnillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. And now, inshaAllah ta'ala, we're going to move on to the next segment. And we're going to have our first hafiz on the line, inshaAllah ta'ala, our brother, Abdul Kafi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing? Abdul Kafi. How are you? You okay? Alhamdulillah, I'm doing well. MashaAllah, Barakallah Fikum. Lovely to have you with us. You are calling from South Africa, Johannesburg? No, no, South Africa. MashaAllah, I was in Johannesburg recently and I met our brother Abdul Kafi over there. MashaAllah, Barakallah Fik. How are you and your family? Everybody okay, inshaAllah? Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khairan. So Abdul Kafi, you memorize the Quran, right? Naam. MashaAllah. Yes. Allahumma barik. Allahumma zid wa barik. When was this? Uh, I completed in 2013. 2013. So a decade ago. Allahu Akbar. Uh, yes. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Allahumma barik. How old were you at the time when you completed? About 13. Yeah, 13. 13. So, Masha, you're, you're only yes. 23 now. Only. <laughs> yes. Masha, barakallahu feek. Talk us through your journey, Abdul Kafi. Some memories so, you have, your journey when you completed yeah. the Quran. Uh, I started uh, Madrasa in 2007 in another province, okay. not in Johannesburg. It's called Port Elizabeth. Masha Allah. Masha uh, Allah. So, there was a Ma'alim there called Ma'alim Hassan. Masha'ala. He taught me Hingad and everything. And up until Juzamma, we used to he used to dictate it to us and we used to write it in it and everything. Masha. Masha. And then okay. after Juzamma is when you officially get a kitab and then yeah. you start getting Ashir. Uh, yeah. two pages, three pages a day, half a half yeah. half a page. You memorize yeah. and then the Malin tests you. Masha'Allah. Masha'Allah. Was this the same teacher, Malim Hassan? That I completed with. Yeah, uh, when you started just Amba, the two to three pages. Yes, yes, yes. But then okay. afterwards he left when we were like five Jews. MashaAllah, alhamdulillah. And then I left, uh, I changed provinces to Johannesburg. And then when I moved, I was in Surah to Al-Anbiya. And then from there onwards, in starting of 2013, that year, it's when I completed the Quran. So Anbiya until Baqarah. So Ma'alim Hassan until Anbiya, and then after that you had a new teacher. A new teacher, yes. Ma'al Ali and Ma'al Bisbas, all of them. They were there. 
مع العالي مع البس بس ما شاء الله جميل جمعت مع العالي اوكي ما شاء الله تبارك الله since then how has your life been ever since you completed the Quran it's been 10 years what can you tell us in that time that you've experienced and you felt well it's been amazing and it's it's a thing to meet up friends with usually people when they're going out somewhere that's only when they call each other but as friends we have a group and we we say guys today let's do subah or something and then it's it's been a meeting point basically and it's been amazing all right amazing journey mashallah alhamdulillah what piece of advice do you have if you could give one piece of advice to hufad who are like yourself or those who are have recently memorized the quran and completed from your experience and your journey what can you tell us well i would say if you want to navigate life and solve all its problems learn and stick with the quran mashallah it's going to solve all your problems and everything mashallah uh, the second thing is have good friends that motivate you and you compete with jameen mashallah barakallah fi good friends good friends i would add to that as well we know in the religion that the importance of companionship and good friends uh, brothers and sisters uh, but something that i personally always advise brothers and sisters who are very serious about their journey with the quran is for you to have another specific jamaa and this is a jamaa of quran so jamaa meaning a group so you have general friends you have righteous friends who are reminding you of allah but on the path of the quran a righteous friend won't suffice That sounds strange, right? A righteous friend won't suffice. But what we mean by that is they may be righteous, but maybe they themselves are not pursuing the Quran. So here, their righteousness hasn't really benefited you because they're not pushing you to learn the Quran. They're not encouraging you to learn the Quran. They're not there to be support towards you when you're learning the Quran. So you will need to have companions who are upon the path of the Quran and as we have found from our brother this has really really helped him so i just wanted to add that point as well and i wanted to ask you another question as well what was the most difficult surah that you memorized when you were going through the book of allah there's 114 surahs which one was the most difficult i would say surah an-nahl surah an-nahl 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 You yeah. found Surah An-Nahl hard? Yes. Okay. Hard. It, okay, personal question. Do you still find it hard now? Or? Uh, no, no. no okay. Not that much, yeah. Okay, mashallah. Surah An-Nahl, I've never heard that before. I can see, it's a little bit, yeah, the ayat are quite similar. I can see how that may be a difficult surah, but I've never heard that before. We hear other surahs, like people say Surah Hud, Surah Al-An'am, and you know, we hear these surahs normally. What about the easiest surah? Easiest surah. Maybe yeah. Ahzab or Sajda. Ahzab or Sajda. Ahzab was very challenging for me to be fair when I was memorizing the Quran. <laughs> Ahzab, because when I finished it, I didn't come. I didn't, I didn't read the whole surah to the teacher. I just skipped it. I went to the next surah. So I forgot about it. So Ahzab, yeah, I understand. And Sajda as well. Yes, that's what I done with Surah Al-Nahl. Yeah, I skipped it also. You skipped it also, mashallah. May Allah forgive us. Okay, Barakallah mm-hmm. Feek, Abdul Kafi, it was lovely to have you. Barakallah Feek, may Allah increase you and keep you firm and allow you to achieve even more بإذن الله تعالى on your path of the Qur'an. The Qur'an never ends, as you know, when you memorize it and you finish your journey with the memorization, that's when everything really starts. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise you by it and allow you to remain steadfast. Jazakallah mm-hmm. khairan ya Abdul Kafi. Alhamdulillah, it was very good to hear from him and his journey. A brother who completed the Qur'an over 10 years ago resides in South Africa. Alhamdulillah, it's a big ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep him upon this path. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow him to excel further in his studies. And look at that brothers and sisters. A person could finish the Quran over 10 years ago and still be able to recall and remember and share and inspire everybody else. It's not a normal achievement. A normal achievement that you've done a couple of years ago, you may forget, let alone 10 years ago. But the Quran is not something that a person ever forgets. Like in the Quran, Allah says himself, سَنُقْرِئُكَ فَلَا تَنْسَى We are going to teach you the Quran and you will not forget it. That's not just the words of the Quran, it's everything pertaining to it. سَنُقْرِئُكَ فَلَا تَنْسَى 
You're not going to forget. So this journey is going to be a journey of memories that you are going to cherish, that is going to empower you at every stage of your life. And when you memorize the Quran at a very young age, he was telling us that he memorized the Quran at the age of 13. Look at that. Age of 13, people are still in school. It's a very young age, the beginning of teenage years. But if you memorize the Quran that early, even if a person is put to test at a young age with things that may not be beneficial for them in their religious life or their worldly life, the Quran is bigger than any desire, any test, any challenge. It will guide you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as opposed to a person who doesn't even have the Quran. So from the benefits of memorizing the Quran early and giving it such importance is that the Quran will be a hirz for you. It will be a fortress for you. It will protect you. The Quran will guard you. And the Quran will not allow you to take any steps towards a direction that is unpleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, by you memorizing the Quran and protecting, preserving the Quran, Allah will protect you and preserve you as well. These words are not only meant to be stored away and locked in your heart, but these words are going to be that which makes you guarded, protected, living in this world safe from things that you can't defend yourself from. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from the Hufad of the Quran, who carry the Quran and give it its true importance and understand its weight and understand his magnitude. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single person on this program and the people behind it to the people who are calling in and allow us all inshallah ta'ala to soften our hearts through the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with that inshallah ta'ala, we will end the episode there bi ta'ala. We leave you in the protection and the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.